Hi, everyone. I'm Cheryl Butler, and you are listening to the Mighty Mommy's Quick and Dirty Tips podcast, which will help make your life as a parent a little bit easier and a lot more fun. Welcome. Today's episode is number 598, Six Creative Tips for Parents of Picky Eaters, because you want your kiddo to eat nutritious foods, but kids are notoriously fussy. Stop wheedling and bribing and get creative about exposing your kids to all kinds of healthy options. I'm one of those adventurous people. I've always been willing to try any new food at least once. Well, within reason. I don't do insects and liver. I'm especially adventurous, though, when it comes to vegetables. The presentation of color, texture, and even smell rarely dissuade me. Because of my willingness to eat a pungent mystery food, I was cautiously optimistic that my eight children would follow in my footsteps, or should I say palate, and give most foods a try. Forget it. (laughs) When I became a mom and had three kids with sensory issues who couldn't tolerate certain textures, I discovered a whole new world of food pickiness. I had to get creative to make sure my kids ate healthy foods, and I can honestly say it wasn't always easy. Eight kids, and 25 years later, I've learned a few tricks to help entice even the pickiest taste buds. So today, I have six helpful tools to help the fussy eaters in your household expand their culinary horizons and try new foods. First, give up the power struggle. My number one tool to ease your journey with a picky eater might surprise you. Are you ready? It's you. As parents, we'll do anything to make sure that our kids eat nutritious foods. We prepare leafy green salads and whole grain pasta topped with fresh veggies and even low-salt marinara sauce. We opt for the leanest proteins and even encourage dairy alternatives like almond milk. But what do we do when our best efforts don't cut it with our kids? No, we don't force them to eat what we've made. We do the opposite. Let them decide if they'll give it a try. Dina Rose, Ph.D., a sociologist and author of It's Not About the Broccoli, sets us straight by stating, a lot of the time, it's a control struggle, not forcing them to eat the last two bites of green beans. In an NBC News article about kids who are picky eaters, she stressed that kids are wise to the fact that mealtime is something their parents care about. But Rose says that it's perfectly normal for kids to be unsure of new foods. Nutrition science research, she said, shows that it can take up to 12 exposures to a new food before they decide if it's something that they like. The next time your little angel wants nothing to do with the veggie casserole you lovingly prepared, don't sweat it. Instead of taking the eat-it-or-else approach, take Rose's advice and simply expose your child to the new food. What does exposure mean? Rose said, an exposure might be looking at the food in the serving dish, listening to a parent talk about eating it, helping prepare the food, feeling the food, or just trying a nibble of the food. It's brilliant. You quickly put the ball back in your child's court. Rather than forcing her to try the food, which ultimately takes away her control, you offer her an alternative give up the power struggle, and watch your child's negativity take a positive turn. Number two, maximize mornings. Breakfast is the perfect opportunity to set your kids on a healthy track for the day. While a plate of scrambled eggs might not entice a picky eater, an egg sandwich might do the trick. Mini bagels come in healthier options, such as whole grain or high fiber. Add an egg and a slice of turkey bacon or cheese, and you've got a filling and nutritious breakfast. Whole grain pancakes and waffles are also an easy fix in the morning, especially if you make a batch or two ahead and freeze them for a quick treat on a busy school morning. I add extra fiber, flax seed, and even shredded zucchini into my pancakes to sneak in more nutritional value. Offer a couple of different toppings besides syrup so your kids feel like they have a choice. These can be cinnamon, fat-free whipped cream, sliced strawberries or bananas, even peanut butter. When my kids were young and they were toddlers and preschoolers, I invested in large cookie-cutter shapes of things like dinosaurs and teddy bears 
and I poured the pancake mix directly into the cutter to make the pancakes even more fun to eat. Number three, meal planning. It's a win-win. When busy parents scurry through the door at the end of the day, only to find an empty fridge and hungry kids, we often fall into the trap of heating frozen chicken nuggets or whipping up a box of mac and cheese. And we all know those aren't exactly the most nutritious options. That's why another of my favorite strategies, both for feeding picky eaters and creating money-saving delicious menus, is meal planning. Meal planning can help soothe the fussy taste buds in your midst, as well as pull your family meals out of a sorry rut. Just start with two to three meals so you don't get overwhelmed planning out an entire week. If your kids already liked baked chicken, think of a new side dish that they could try with it, like grilled vegetables sprinkled with Parmesan cheese or fruit kebabs with yogurt dipping sauce. Try and have at least one item that you know your kids will eat. And then mix it up with a new side dish like couscous or whole grain rice pilaf with pieces of grilled fish. Even if they only have a little taste of the new dish, that's something to build on for next time. This way, if you add something new into the repertoire every week, you will substantially expand their palates in a short time. One of my favorite ways to get my kids to eat new foods is next. Number four, hold auditions for new foods. When my kids were younger and I wanted them to try a new food, I created a ritual called food auditions. I even made mini posters and put them up around the dining room table to look official. The kids were the judges, of course. Then I put a little bit of the new dish onto everyone's plate. Each judge had to take some time to look at it, ask questions, and, if they were able, try a few bites. Once they tasted the food, they'd let me know if the contestant landed the roll as a new family dish or if it just didn't cut it. Even if a dish got axed, I kept it in our meal planning mix for at least a couple of months. That's because, as I've already mentioned, research shows that kids need repeated exposure to new foods before they really form preferences and are more willing to try it. Food auditions are fun, and I had great success with using them to encourage my kids to at least try new foods. Thanks to our family's food auditions, items like kale chips, lettuce wraps, and spinach and berry smoothies have become staples in our family's regular menus. Number five, helpful phrases make a difference. When I desperately wanted my fussy eaters to try something new, I thought sweet-talking them was the way to make it happen. Just one tiny bite will make mommy so happy. If you finish your spinach, you can have an ice cream cone for dessert. The list of bribes was endless. Then, a friend of mine shared a constructive tip that made a huge difference. She told me not to plant the wrong phrases in my kids' minds when I was coaxing them to test new foods. Instead of pleading with my kids and offering bribes, my friend suggested that I watched how I worded my request and use a more positive approach. Bingo! As straightforward as that advice sounded, I hadn't realized how successful it would be. With some positive reframing, see, that didn't taste so bad, did it? Bet it now becomes, which one is your favorite? Or instead of saying, no dessert until you eat your veggies, you might say, we can try these vegetables again another time. Next time, should we try them raw or cooked? And for a quick tip, visit www.choosemyplate.gov and check out their fun and supportive list of phrases that help and hinder when trying to guide your child to try new foods. Bon appetit! And last, number six, eat together as a family. Today's overscheduled families find it more challenging to gather around the table every night to share a meal. Yes, mealtime is about feeding everyone to satisfy their hunger, but it's actually about much more. When we sit down with one another at the end of a hectic day and share stories about what went on at school or work or our sports practices, we're staying connected with the ones that we love. Make a loving ritual out of dinner as often as possible. Allow each child one night a week to help plan and make dinner. When kids get involved, they're more apt to eat what they prepare. Have them make suggestions about some new foods they'd like to have served at a family dinner. 
Let them choose something from all the food groups. If salad isn't popular in your household, how about a Greek yogurt parfait to start the meal? There are lots of newfangled options for pasta nowadays, including whole grain and omega-3 versions. Kebabs are also a fun twist on introducing new veggies when paired with grilled meats or tofu. My kids were always more inclined to try fresh meats or veggies if a tasty dipping sauce was part of the recipe. If you get your family into the habit of eating together regularly, you can also use that as a catalyst for introducing new foods. Constantly expose yourself to a variety of recipes that could become a fast family favorite. Visit my page at www.quickanddirtytips.com slash mighty-mommy and you'll find an awesome YouTube video that has some delicious and super easy options that are sure to please. Before I wrap up this episode, I have one more special surprise for you. 2020, it has sure changed all the rules. Our team at Quick and Dirty Tips is here to support you and help you adapt. I've asked nutrition diva Monica Reinagel, a registered dietitian, to answer some of the common nutrition questions parents are asking when it comes to providing healthy and nourishing food choices for kids during their virtual school day. This week, I asked her a question I've been getting from so many of my listeners. It was this. I'm working remotely as well as guiding my three kids through their distant learning, so convenience is a huge factor for me. I worry I'll serve a lot more items that have hidden sugars during these stressful times while I'm juggling our remote schedules. Do you have any tips on what prepared foods I should avoid that present as healthy options but in reality, they're full of sugar and other unhealthy ingredients. It is true that prepared and packaged foods often contain more sugar and also salt than homemade versions would. But who has time to compare every single brand of ketchup or crackers to find the one with the least added sugar? You could make yourself crazy doing that. And, you know, even if your ketchup does contain an extra gram or two of added sugar, How many tablespoons of ketchup are your kids really eating every day? You know what? On second thought, maybe I don't want to know the answer to that. But because we can't worry about everything, I think it makes sense to focus first on those foods that are likely to be doing the most damage in terms of sugar. Now, of course, we know that desserts and sweets are going to be high in sugar, but some foods that we might not think of as sweets or that we think of as healthy foods still contain a lot of sugar. And some of those are sweetened breakfast cereals, flavored yogurts, fruit juice and fruit snacks, and granola or snack bars. Now, you may not choose to completely avoid these foods, but you can try to find the ones that are lower in sugar. Thanks, Monica. That's it for this week, and stay tuned for more bonus tips in upcoming episodes in the weeks to come. How do you manage your picky eater? Join the conversation and share your thoughts in the comments section at quickanddirtytips.com slash mighty-mommy. You can also interact with me on the Mighty Mommy Facebook page or Twitter, and you can email me at mommy at quickanddirtytips.com. Listen and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. As always, thanks so much for listening. Join me next week when we talk about eight must-do activities to consider in your last month of pregnancy. Because the last few weeks of pregnancy can be tough, but they can also be exciting and really special. Until next time, happy parenting. Happy parenting.